This is the second in a series of video tutorials related to complex document formatting in Microsoft Word 2013. At this point, you should already have completed the Microsoft Word 2013 workshop part one. In this workshop, we'll continue with our document that has already been broken into document sections, and we'll be creating custom headers and footers for each of the document sections. I'll also be showing you some of the additional manipulations that can be done with document sections in Word. Before we begin, be sure you have the Microsoft Word 2013 workshop document that we worked on last time up and available on your computer. As you can see, this is the document that we worked on in workshop part one. We've already added the section breaks to create our document sections in this file. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to look at how the headers are connected between each of our document sections. So there are a few ways that you can open headers and footers in Microsoft Word 2013. The easiest way is to take your mouse, move it up into the part of the page that would be either a header or a footer. In this case, we're in the header area and double click and that will open the header and footer tools. Alternatively, you can go to the insert tab and click on header or footer. If we click on header, it'll give us some options here. We're going to click on edit header because we want to create a custom header and footer for each document section. Now you'll notice right in here that there is a label on this header that says header section one. If we scroll through the document, we'll see the footer for section one. And since we have this section break next page right here, on the second page, we're going to be in the header for section two. Then footer for section two, header for section three, which is going to continue uh, for several pages in this document. And finally, we'll have our header for section four, which is for our references. So as you can see, Word, once you've set up your document into sections, is designed to automatically create different headers for each of those sections if you choose. Now, it can be a little bit tricky because by default, all of these headers are linked. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna type in some dummy text here. This is the header for section one. And you'll notice if I close the header and footer, that if I go down, this header for section one is linked in all of the different sections within this document. That's because by default, Word is going to assume that you want the same header and footer to appear in every section of the document. Well, for most complex documents, that's actually not what you want. You want different headers and footers to help the reader follow the complex organization of your document. So uh, we are going to set up our title page the way that a title page would normally be configured, which means it's not going to have anything in the header or the footer. Typically a title page stands alone with the text on the page. So we're gonna go down into section two and we're going to add our first header for section two, which is the executive summary. Now, one thing that I like to do sometimes in complex documents is have a, a nice line that makes it clear which part of the page is the section header and which part is the rest of the document. So there are a number of ways that you can do that. You could go to insert and insert a shape that would be a line that would go across the top. Uh, I find that I just like to use the underline feature in Microsoft Word. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the Home tab. I'm going to set this font to be underline and I'm just gonna press the Tab key twice to get a nice long line across the page. And then I'm gonna type in Executive Summary. And this will be my page header for the executive summary. Now, if we double click outside of the header, that'll close header and footer tools. But again, we have a problem. 
since all of our headers and footers are linked, you'll see that this executive summary has appeared on every section of the document, even those that are not the executive summary. So what we have to do is in our second document section, we need to turn off the feature in Word that links each section to the previous section. You can find that when you double click on your header. In the header and footer tools under design, navigation, there's a button called link to previous. You can see right now that it is blue because it is currently selected. I'm going to click that to deselect it. Now, what that means is, that our first page header for the title page and our executive summary header are now not linked. So I can go up to my title page, which should have no header, select everything, and press delete to get rid of that. Now we'll see when I close the header and footer, my first page looks as it should with nothing on the header or the footer. My second page has the executive summary header and then we'll notice that every following section is linked to that. So we're going to have to do this unlink header multiple times. So we're going to go into the document body. We are going to unlink to previous and then we can just edit this text and change it to what we want this document section to be called. I'm going to call this Bill Gates Biography. We'll continue down. We have another section in this document, and that is the references. When we get to the references, again, I'm going to click in that header. I'm going to unselect link to previous, and we're going to change this to references. Great. Now I'm going to close the header and footer. And now we have our custom headers right here in the document. Now, there's one part of this document that doesn't yet appear because I haven't created it yet, and that is our table of contents. Whenever you have complex documents, you want to make sure you provide your readers with a roadmap particularly for multi-page long reports, it's important that you create a table of contents. So we're going to create an extra section in this document just for the table of contents. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to type table of contents, and I'm going to insert another section break next page because we want the table of contents to be its own section. So to do that, I'm going to go to Page Layout, Breaks, Section Break, Next Page. So you can see now we have our title page still with its own section. Now we have our table of contents with its own section. And then we followed by the executive summary. So table of contents, we're going to want to format that header in the same way as all of the others. So I'm going to pop up here, go to the Home tab, Underline, press the tab key twice, and then type in table of contents. Now, this one, again, we want to unlink to previous. I did that too late, which means we now have the table of contents on our first page. So I'm going to have to go back and delete that. So you can see how uh, sometimes you have to think through what you're doing when you're creating your headers and footers in these complex documents. As if that wasn't complicated enough, it's also true that your footers are linked separately from the rest of the document. So you'll notice that my footer here is still linked to previous, uh, even though I have already unlinked the header on section two, which is the table of contents. So, in order to format this properly, uh, the next thing we want to do is create our document footers. And for this document, all we're going to put in the footer is the page number for each page. Just like uh, there's no header on your title page, there should be no footer or page numbers on your title page either. So uh, we're going to leave that empty. We're going to go into section two, which is our table of contents. 
and we are going to unlink from previous. If we don't unlink from previous, then we're going to have page numbers that appear on the title page. So we're going to unlink from previous. I'm going to go to the Home tab and center this so that we have a centered page number on each page in the footer. And then I'm going to go to Header and Footer Tools and we're going to insert a page number. Now you have a lot of options for how your page number can be formatted and where it appears. I'm just going to go to Current Position. I've already positioned my cursor in the center where I want the page number to appear. So I'm going to click on Current Position and I'm just going to do a plain number. If you do really fancy formatted reports, you can do things like accent bars. Uh, there are lots of different ways that you can format your page numbers. I'm going to put in a plain number for this particular document. So there we have it. Uh, now we have a problem in that our page number is uh, starting out with number two. Now if you look in your textbook, under how to format a formal report, you'll find that the title page should not be counted in the page numbers. So we actually need to start uh, our table of contents on page one. Or actually, to be more correct, it needs to start on page I because your preceding pages should all be numbered with lowercase Roman numerals. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to select this page number. I'm going to go back to header and footer tools under page number and I'm going to select format page numbers. Now here we have all of the options related to how we want the page number to be formatted. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start at 1 because I don't want to count the title page as a page in this document. I'm also going to change the number format to lowercase Roman numerals and hit OK. Terrific. So now my table of contents page has lowercase Roman numeral page numbers. Now, if we've learned anything so far, it's that all of these headers and footers are linked independently. So that means when we get into the executive summary, it's going to be continuing that page numbering, but formatted differently. So what we want to do is again, select that we're going to unlink from previous. We want to be able to change the way that our numbers are formatted in the remainder of the document. So I'm going to select that. We're back in header and footer tools. I'll click on page number, format page numbers, and we want this to start at number one. So the lowercase Roman numeral page numbers go on all of the preceding pages things like your table of contents, the remainder of the report should be formatted with regular Arabic numerals. So we're going to start with one. Now I can close my header and footer and I'm going to view this as one page just so I can go through and make sure that they're set properly. So on page one I have no header and I have no footer and that's the way it should be. On page two I have a table of contents header and a lowercase Roman numeral page number. On page three, I have an executive summary header and a regular Arabic numeral starting with page one that continues through the rest of the document. So that's how we set up our custom headers and footers in Microsoft Word 2013. I do want to briefly show you a few other things that you can do with document sections. Now, it doesn't really make sense in this document, but let's say that I had a page or a set of pages within my document that I wanted to format differently. So, for example, maybe I wanted to have one page have different margins, or even more dramatically, maybe I want to have a page in the document that is oriented differently. Maybe I have a really wide table that needs to be in landscape orientation in order to display everything. Since I have set up my document in sections, I can change all of those settings within a particular section without having any effect on the rest of the document. So I'm going to go to Page Layout, and I'm going to change the orientation just so you can see what's possible. So now, the executive summary section of this document is rotated to landscape orientation 
while the rest of the document remains in portrait mode. So this is a really nice feature. Using document sections gives you complete control over the look and feel of each document section separately. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to portrait orientation for now. But you can see now uh, how document sections can really give you much more control over the way that you produce your document. Well, this concludes part two of the Microsoft Word 2013 workshop related to complex document formatting. Hopefully now you have a really clear handle on how you can use the header and footer tools within Microsoft Word to customize the document section header and footers within a complex document. Feel free to explore the Word interface and explore all of the options that are available to you for customizing headers and footers. Once you've completed all of the header and footer tasks in this workshop, go ahead and continue to part three.